This video is brought to you by the Program Manager Infantry Combat Equipment, or PMICE. PMICE is a program management office within Marine Corps Systems Command located in Quantico, Virginia. This video is one in a series of videos PMICE has developed in order to instruct, educate, and assist Marines in the proper form, fit, function, use, and care of infantry combat equipment being fielded by this program office. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the proper use and care of the High Cut Enhanced Combat Helmet, referred to from here on as the High Cut ECH. The High Cut ECH is not replacing the Standard Cut ECH. The High Cut ECH is designated for infantry and infantry-like MOSs. If you have the Standard Cut ECH, please watch our original videos on Marine Corps Systems Command's YouTube channel. The search title for those videos are Enhanced Combat Helmet Training Video and the updated Enhanced Combat Helmet Training Video. During this video, we will demonstrate the procedure for inspecting the High Cut ECH for serviceability, installing the rails, the MVD bracket, and the suspension system. We will also cover sizing, donning, fit, adjusting, and the care and cleaning of the High Cut ECH. We've incorporated this menu that will allow you to quickly access specific sections of the video during subsequent viewing. Refer to it in order to get the time indicator for the section you want to review. The High Cut ECH will be issued out of the individual issue facility and the size range will be small through extra large. Inventory. Let's start by discussing the components that make up the High Cut ECH. The bare helmet itself is called the shell. The components for the high cut ECH include the headlock retention system. This system incorporates headlock sliders, a fit band, and a dial adjustment knob. You will notice that the adjustment knob not only adjusts along the nape, it also adjusts the fit band along the sides. The night vision device bracket. As you can see, this one includes a bungee to aid in retention. Here we have a rail kit that allows cable routing and attachment of the various components to include hearing protection and goggles. Refer to the QRG for further details. Velcro mounting patches that allow for the attachment of various accessories such as flashlights and strobes. A rear mount patch for an external battery pack. A set of 10 Lux Pux pads. Finally, a quick reference guide will be issued with each helmet. The QRG will include information presented in this video as well as additional information not covered in this video. Inspection. We'll now demonstrate the procedures for inspecting the high cut ECH for serviceability. You should conduct this inspection when first receiving your helmet and periodically during use. On the helmet itself, examine for dents, cuts, delaminating, or chipped paint. Inspect the MVD bracket for serviceability and that it is securely attached. Check the rail kit for damage and ensure the mounting screws are secure. Ensure the Velcro patches are secure and free of dirt and debris. On the inside of the helmet, inspect for damage or loose hook disc. Discs that will not securely hold the pads in place will require the wearer to turn the helmet in for a replacement. Inspect the Luxpux pads for cuts, tears, or other damage to outer fabric, deteriorated inner foam, and pads that don't adhere to the hook disc. Regardless of the inspection results, pads should be replaced after six months of continuous use. Finally, check the retention system for torn or frayed webbing, broken headlock sliders, serviceable chin strap, and missing or loose attaching hardware. Also check that the adjustment knob functions properly. Though your helmet will be issued completely assembled, I'm going to demonstrate how to install the various components in case you need to make repairs, adjustments, and or replace any of the components. Let's start with the NVD bracket. Installing the NVD bracket. While holding the post in place, insert the screw and hand tighten with a flathead screwdriver until snug plus a quarter turn. Note that the post will slightly deform as it is tightened. 
The high-cut ECH bracket includes a bungee cord in the event your night vision device is accidentally dislodged. Once the bracket is in place, install the bungee cord into the cutout grooves. Installing the retention system and rail kit. We are now ready to install the rail kit and the retention system. You will notice that the rails and the retention system share the mounting hardware, which consists of four screws and four T-nuts. Take note that the screws used in the front are slightly longer than the rear screws. The two front screws are 25.5 millimeters and the rear screws are 24 millimeters. Be sure to use accordingly. I will start with the rear portion of the retention system and the rail. With the Luxpux pads removed, insert one of the 24 millimeter screws, which is the smaller of the two side screws, into the rail and into the hole in the helmet. Next, insert the T-nut into the rear strap anchor and align it to the screw. While holding everything in place, use a flathead screwdriver and tighten the screw hand tight plus a quarter turn. Repeat this process for the other rear portion of the retention system and rail, again using the shorter of the two screws. Moving to the front portion, insert the 25.5 millimeter screw, which is the longer of the two side screws, into the rail and into the hole in the helmet. Next, on the inside of the helmet, place the tip of the screw into the hole on the fit band that represents the helmet size. As you can see, I am using the hole marked L for large. While holding everything in place, insert the T-nut into the front strap anchor and align it to the screw. Tighten the screw hand tight, plus a quarter turn. Repeat this process for the remaining retention strap and rail. Installing the Lux Pux Suspension System. We are now ready to install the Lux Pux pads. The 10 Lux Pux pads are designed to absorb energy in order to reduce head injury risk from blunt impacts. Using a diamond pattern, place four pads in the rear and four pads in the front, placing them as close to the chin strap anchors as possible. Place the remaining two pads in a linear pattern centered between the front and rear pads. Over the years, we've seen Marines remove the pads from their helmets. Removing the pads is like removing the airbags from your car. You wouldn't do that to your car, so don't do that to your helmet. They are there for a reason. Remember, you should replace your pads after six months of continuous use. External Velcro loop patches and the rear mount patch. Let's discuss the Velcro loop patches and the rear mount patch. If you need to replace these Velcro loop patches, reapply them in the locations depicted in the QRG. To incorporate an external battery pack, remove the rear mount patch from the helmet and attach the battery pack using the bungee cords and then reattach the rear mounting patch to the helmet. Determining your helmet size. Before we learn how to don and adjust the helmet for the proper fit, let's go over the process to determine your correct helmet size. The procedure is the same procedure we use for the lightweight helmet and the standard cut ECH. A sizing kit consisting of a sizing chart, a caliper, and a measuring tape is available at the issue facility. The first step is to measure the wearer's head length. Using a caliper, measure the distance between the eyebrows to the back of the head. The caliper should lightly touch the skin, but not indent the skin. Now, place the tip of the caliper on the starting point of the sizing chart and take note of the helmet size indicated. The next step is to measure the wearer's head width. Use the caliper to measure the maximum horizontal width of the head just above the ears. Use the sizing chart and take note of the helmet size indicated. Now, using a tape measure, measure the maximum circumference of the head just above the ears and lay the tape measure on the sizing chart and take note of the size indicated. The final step is to compare all three measurements and select the measurement that corresponds to the largest of the three. That is your high cut ECH size. For example, if the head length corresponds to a large and the two other measurements correspond to a medium, you will still select a large helmet. If the sizing chart is not available, 
Use the caliper and a tape measure to determine the measurements. You would then use the chart located within the QRG to determine your helmet size. Keep in mind that the use of a balaclava and or a protective mask may place the wearer into the next larger helmet size. Be sure to take this into account before the mission. Donning and adjusting the high cut ECH. Warning, as with all helmets, your high cut ECH should be properly sized, fitted, and adjusted for a snug and secure fit at all times when the helmet is worn. An improperly worn helmet may result in a less than optimal performance and possible injury or death. We're now ready to don the helmet and achieve the proper fit. Before doing so, extend all the straps to the longest settings by sliding the four headlock sliders towards the helmet as such. Additionally, while looking at the dial adjustment knob, turn it counterclockwise. Start by placing the helmet on your head and pressing down until you feel the center Lux Pucks pads touching your head. If they don't touch your head, the helmet is too small. Buckle the chin strap, ensuring that your chin is centered in the opening. Next, turn the dial adjustment knob and tighten until the fit band is comfortably snug. Using both hands, simultaneously pull the rear headlock sliders on the lower webbing towards your chin until snug. Now, slide the two headlock sliders that are by your temples down towards your chin until snug. The helmet should now be snug but still comfortable. At this point, conduct a fit check. A properly fitted helmet should sit securely on the head with little to no movement when rocking the head side to side and front to back. Visually inspect for fit. The brim of the helmet should be no more and no less than one half inch above the top of the wearer's eyebrow. When glancing up, the wearer should be able to see the brim of the helmet. If after all adjustments are made, more than half an inch of the forehead is exposed, the wearer does not see the brim, or if the helmet is simply too tight, obtain a larger helmet. Likewise, if the helmet seems to be the right size, yet it is still too loose and or sits too low on the brow, obtain a smaller helmet. When donning the helmet for the first time in a cold environment, it may be necessary to wear the helmet for a few minutes or otherwise warm the pads so that the pads will conform to the shape of your head. In addition to wearing the helmet to warm the pads, you can also place them in your pockets. As the pads warm up to conform to the shape of your head, it may be necessary to re-tighten the retention straps. Use with various hairstyles. The high cut ECH can be adjusted to accommodate different hairstyles. When wearing with a bun, it is recommended to wear the bun low in order to maintain a proper firing position when in the prone. Cleaning and care. Follow the cleaning and care instructions outlined in your QRG. Marine Corps Systems Command produced this video in order to demonstrate the proper use and care of the high cut ECH. There are several other training videos on Syscom's YouTube channel that demonstrate the proper form, fit, and function of select infantry combat equipment, such as the new plate carrier Generation 3. Go check them out. For more information regarding the High Cut ECH or any other infantry combat equipment, please contact the program office at pm underscore ice at usmc.mil.